Hi, dear friends. I, I want to tell you what happened to me uh, on my trip to Chicago, Illinois, not long ago. I, I got in me one of these here yellow cab automobiles and went down to the train depot to buy my ticket. And I, I walked up to the feller behind the cage and I told him where I wanted to go to, to, to Chicago. And it was nighttime and he says to me, he says, well, do you want a Pullman? And I, <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about, so, and I didn't want him to find out I was so dumb, so I says, yeah, I guess I do, I, I'll take one. So I bought my ticket. Well, sir, I got on the train there, and I come to find out that this here Pullman thing he was talking about was a, was a little old bitty stall built up there in the top of the train where I was supposed to sleep at. Little bitty place, wasn't room enough to cuss a cat without getting hair in your mouth. It, uh, it had a ladder going up to it. He called it a berth, that's what he called it. It was an upper berth. I got an upper berth because they're lower than the lower berths. I mean, the, the lower berths are higher than the higher berths because they're lower. Uh, I mean, well, <laughs> I don't think I know what I'm talking about. But anyhow, it, uh, it had a ladder going up there, so I clumb up this ladder to get in my bed there. And I got up in that little old place trying to get my britches off so as I could go to bed. And the first thing I knowed, I had my neck rammed out the window about four feet. <laughs> Some smart aleck hung a mail sack on it before I could get it back. Well, sir, we finally got up to Chicago, and I went over to this big fine hotel to get me a room. And the, the feller running the hotel place there, he, he turned me over to a feller named Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter. Well, Mr. Porter, he took me in my valise and put us in a little old cage of a thing built in the wall there. He, uh, he called it an elevator, el elevator. And, and he put me in that thing, and then he pushed a button, and that thing said, Psst, went right straight up. <laughs> I never wanted to sit down as bad in my life. I'm telling you, my stomach just felt so cool. Well, all of a sudden, he stopped, and when he stopped, I sort of grunted. <laughs> he looked around at me, and he said, What's the matter, buddy? Did I stop too quick for you? <laughs> I says, No, no, I'm used to wearing my britches down around my ankles like this. Well, I finally got off at the elevator and got in my room, and oh, it was a pretty place. It was a fine room. I'm telling you, it was fine. And I washed my neck and ears and cleaned up a little bit there, and went back down in the lobby and was just a standing around there in this pretty hotel, just looking around. Never had been there before. And I seen a feller walk out through the lobby there, and I, I seen his pocketbook fall out of his pocket. Well, I went over and picked it up and was going to give it back to him, but before I could turn around there hardly, he'd done gone out and, and I couldn't find him. I didn't know who he were, no how. So I just had to keep his pocketbook. So I, I took it and I went in a little old room there to see how much money was in it, a little room just off of the lobby there. At the, at the, everybody was using it. It was a little room there. Let's see, what was the name of that room now? Let me see. Uh, it had a name right up over the top of it. It uh, started with a T, I know that. Oh, telephone booth, that's it, telephone booth, yeah. Well, sure, I went in there to see how much money he had in it, and he didn't have but $3.75 in it. So I just took the $3.75 and decided I'd just look old Chicago over. <laughs> so I went out and got on me one of them our city buses, and we started off down the street there. And I'm telling you folks, that there feller that was driving that there bus, he was the smartest man that I ever seen in my life. He knowed every street in Chicago. He knowed everybody in Chicago. Knowed right where they lived at and everything. Yeah, I know he, I know he did because we'd be going along there and all of a sudden he'd stop and holler, Johnson, and Mr. and Ms. Johnson would get up and get off. Go a little further down the street and he'd stop and holler, Williams? And old man Williams got up and got off. And then we went a little further down the street, and he stopped and hollered, Brassfield? And I got up and got off. <laughs> of course, it, it wasn't where I wanted to go, but then he, he was smarter than I was. I wasn't going to argue with him about it. Well, there I was. There I stood, way out there at the edge of Chicago, didn't know nobody, didn't know where I was, didn't know nothing. I was just standing there in the street. And I noticed a boy come uh, riding down the street on his bicycle. And he, ha he had a bunch of bundles and packages on his bicycle. And he rode right up to me there, and he, he stopped and he says, Is this Brassfield? I says, Yeah, yeah. He says, Well, I'm looking for three seventy-five. And you know I had to give that fool that $3.75. <laughs> I 